What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another weekly live stream from Scalar Learning. I am your host, once again, who's Zayfa, and we're going to be doing SAT math problems from Khan Academy, straight from the source. And I'm just going to do a quick little sound check and make sure we are good to go. And we are good. All right. So, so sorry we missed out last week. I was out of town. I was in Greece in the awesome island of Mykonos, so I'm very sorry that I wasn't able to get you an episode last week, but we're going to do one today, get back on track, and we are jumping right in with the category of congruence and similarity. Last, or two weeks ago, we did right triangle word problems, so without further ado, let's get to it. All right, here we go, here we go. Once again, I'm seeing these problems for the first time as always, which is part of the fun. And if you like what you see, please click that like button. And if you wanna see more every week, new SAT problems being solved live on camera by me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, it says the diagram at left shows four lines, A, B, C, D, A, D, and B, C, which the following statements is true. And we got some angles in here. Okay, so I can clearly see that these angles are not, or sorry, these lines are not parallel. These lines might be, but they look like they might be, but I can already tell you they, they're not um, based on uh, some, based on the rules of parallel lines. But anyways, let's, let's not even jump to that yet. Let's see what it's saying. So ABC measures 88. ABC is this angle right here. So they're saying that equals 88. That is impossible because this is a straight line, which means 89 and this angle must be supplementary, meaning they must add up to 180. So this line right here, this angle right here actually has to equal, has to equal 91 degrees. So this guy can be crossed out. Now let's write it up here. A, B, C, D, A is out. B, C, D measures 80. So that's B, C, D measures 80, this guy in here. Okay, this actually, well, let's see here. That would be true. This guy's 80 degrees. That would be true if these two lines were parallel. However, I actually don't think these two lines are parallel because if they were parallel, this angle and this angle, these would be corresponding angles, they would be equal, but they're not because this angle right here is 92. Why? Because these are vertical angles. So if this guy is 92, okay, then this guy is not 89. These are not parallel lines. Therefore, I'm going to say that this angle is not 80 degrees, so I'm going to knock that off. AD intersects BC. AD intersects BC. Since they're not parallel, at some point, these lines have to intersect. Whether it's out here, whether whether it's in this direction or this direction, so I'm going to say, yes, that's true. And then the other question, the, or either they intersect or they don't, and if they don't, they're parallel. That's what it means to not never intersect. So that would be the other option, but I'm saying, like I said from the get-go, that I don't think those lines are parallel. Let's give it a shot, and those are correct. All right, cool. Question number two. In the diagram at left, AB is congruent to BC. So AB is congruent to BC. You know what I'm gonna do, since these are very visual problems, I'm going to take this and I'm gonna put it over here so we can really get an idea of what's going on here. I can mark it up nicely. Okay. There we go. All right. So first it says AB is congruent to BC. So AB, and they have the X's there, which is helpful, but those two are congruent. Uh, which of the following statements is true? So if these two are congruent, by the way, we know that the this angle here and this angle here is congruent. Let's see what else we can figure out. Do we know that this is a parallelogram? I don't know if we know that necessarily or a or I don't know if we can say that this is a uh, excuse me a rhombus because this looks like a rhombus but this d value could also be like here. Right? We just don't we just don't have enough information to say anything further. So anyway, it says DAC is congruent, DAC is congruent to DCA. I don't think we have enough information to show that. So right now, I'm gonna knock, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock that off for the time being. We'll come back to it. BAC, BAC 
is congruent to BCA. Yes, that's what I already highlighted. Why do I know that? I know that because if these two sides are equal, this forms a isosceles triangle, which means that the angles opposite those congruent sides must also be congruent. So I already know B has to be my right answer. Let's just look at C and D for fun. ABC is congruent to ADC. No, we don't know that these two angles are equal, which is not enough information. And then BAD, this entire angle is congruent to this. No, we don't. Because like I said before, it looks like it, but we can't definitively show that. The only thing we can show because of these two angles being equal, or, or its size being equal, are these angles. So I'm gonna go with that, and that's correct. All right, let's keep going. Next, we have the isosceles triangles ABC and DEF shown at left are similar. Okay, so let's let's take a screenshot of this as well, move it over. Okay. So now these guys, make it a little bigger. So those guys are similar. And it says the length AB equals the length of BC. Uh, and the length DE, of course, equals EF. What is the value of V? So we want this value. What is the value of V in radians to the nearest hundredth? Okay. These are both isosceles triangles, which means that this angle also equals that angle. And these two angles equal each other. And since these are similar triangles, if this is pi 6, this angle relates to this angle. This angle relates to this angle, right? So that means these angles up here are also pi 6. Whoops also pi 6. Now this is a really hard question because this this presumes that you can you can understand the relationship between radians and degrees. So of course we all know all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, but what do all the angles in a triangle add up to if we're talking about radians? Well, what's equivalent to 180 degrees? It's actually pi. So pi equals 180 degrees. So all these angles, these three angles must add up to pi. So that means pi 6 plus pi 6, which are these two angles, plus v must equal pi. This is 2 pi 6, which is the same as pi thirds, plus v equals pi. We're going to subtract pi thirds from both sides. Subtract pi thirds from both sides. And we've got v equals, remember this is 1 pi. So 1 pi minus pi thirds is 2 thirds pi. And there's your answer. So 2 thirds pi. Oh, and we need to the nearest hundredth. So we need the calculator. 2 thirds times pi equals 2.09. 2.09. All right, good there. Yay! I love the little fireworks they added. Next, question four or five. We got a crazy diagram. Let's just straight away copy this here. Straight away. Boom. Okay. Now it says, given the lengths of the segments in the figure above, what is the length to the nearest tenth of n? So I'm going to, this is a little weird diagram, but I'm going to assume that's what they want this segment. Oops, let's make a different color. Let's do it in yellow. They want this segment right here. Okay. So let's really think about this. This is a, seems like a kind of a tricky problem. So we know that, what do we know? Do we know that these lines are parallel or anything? Let me see. Did it tell us anything? No. I think, let's see, how would we be able to determine that? This is an interesting problem. So I think this has something to do with similar triangles, but I don't know if we know enough information. Okay, let me see here. 
What is the what is length to the nearest degree of n? Okay, well let's let's look at some um, vertical angles. Maybe that will help us out. I know that these angles right here, oops, are equal because they're vertical. I know that. What else do we know here? This bounces down here. Do I know that these are equal? Or do I know that this is equal? I don't. I know that these angles are equal over here. See, my, my presumption is that this triangle is similar to this. That's just how it looks. But I don't know if that's true. Hmm. This one is congruent to this gigantic one, maybe. Okay, if we know that this is congruent to this one, let's see what else we can figure out. I know that, and then I know that that is congruent to this, but that's if they're parallel. Hmm, this is a little bit tricky. I'm going to really think about this one. Let's see. And there's no other the lengths of the segment in the figure above. All right. These two are equal. We know that. Oh, and then this is also equal. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, I'm gonna take a, uh, a guess here because I, th I think this assumes that these lines are parallel. So I'm not totally sure if this is right, but we basically have, to, if we have two parallel lines, okay, and we have this coming out at a point up here, what I think is true is the ratio of this to this total line is the same as the ratio of this to this total line. So this is my assumption. I'm going to I'm going to try it out and I'm not sure if this is right. So I'm going to say 2.9 over let me see if this is even a calculator. It is a calculator prompt. So 2.9 over 7 8.7 7. okay. So basically which is this entire length, right? 8.7 equals 4.2 over n plus 4.2. And then I think if we cross multiply, we'll actually get an answer. So, four, so we're going to cross multiply 4.2 times 8.7. Now mind you, I'm kind of taking a, a, a little liberty here. I'm not sure if this is right, but it could work. It's 36.54 equals 2.9 n plus and then we kind of have to distribute this multiply by this and that multiply by that 2.9 times 4.2 which equals 12.18 oops equals 12 plus 12.18 36.5 so I'm going to minus 12.18 from both sides 36.54 whoops 36.54 minus 12.18 equals 24.36 2.9n equals 24.36 and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2.9 divide it by 2.9 get 8 point something 8.4 I wonder if that is correct. So we're going to go for it, I guess, because I can't really think of anything else to do. It's also interesting because it's literally this is double this. I, that's an easier way to do it. I just saw that this is double that, which is 5.8. So this is 8.4. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I'm just not sure I have enough. I've done enough to validate that, but let's give it a shot. Uh, OK, it's correct. Now, this tells us that, so how do we, we can see that the upper line bisects two of the sides of the triangle on the left. So, oh, that's how we know it's parallel. We know 
it's parallel because, see, that's what I missed. So I had to presume that they were parallel. They look really parallel, but it's because of this. It, if it bisected just this side, it wouldn't necessarily be parallel to this line. It's because it bisected this side and this side, and that's a theorem in geometry where if you have a line that's parallel to one of the bases, it's gonna perfectly bisect both of those sides of the triangle, um, or, or not bisect it, but it's gonna split those both proportionately. And since it's bisecting these guys, well, there you go. And that means that it's going to also split these guys proportionately as well. Therefore, the ratio of this to this is the same as this to this. And that, that was kind of my proportion, but I made it more complicated. I did this over the whole thing versus just this to this. So, okay, but there you go. Kind of, you can kind of figure it out even if you're not 100% sure by taking a few liberties that seem logical. And that's what I did there. In the figure at the left, lines C and D are parallel. What is the value of X? All right, so now we know they're parallel, which is nice. Let's get this over here. Oops. All right, in the figure at the left, line C and D are parallel. What is the value of X? Now, let's see if there's anything I missed. Figure not drawn to scale, okay. So, what is the value of X? And we wanna find X. So if, if these two lines are parallel, and we don't necessarily know if these two lines are parallel, but what we definitely know is that this is a transversal that's crossing in between these two parallel lines, which means that this and this are, these are equal angles because those are called corresponding angles. So if these are corresponding angles, what we know is that these two have to equal each other, right? This is eight. Oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, C and D are parallel. Yeah, there we go. So we don't know anything about A and B, but these two are parallel, these are corresponding angles. So this is pretty much as simple as saying 9x plus 5 equals 8x plus 13. Subtract 8x, and we get x plus 5 equals 13. Subtract 5, subtract 5, x equals 8. And that's it. Now let's plug these values in. Hold on, let's just, just for fun. We get 8 times 9 is 72, plus 5 is 77, 64 plus 13 is 77. So that makes those guys equal, and that's good. Now this is also supposed to be equal. I just re realized that they, they this equals these as well because of that notation. And if we plugged in 8 here, it would be 64, 89. Well, but this isn't necessarily, I don't know why they use this notation I think they just meant that because this refers to this angle the this one's not shouldn't necessarily be equal to those it could be if a is parallel to B but not necessarily um, right we don't have any other indication that a and B are parallel let me just try something really quickly here for the 48 yeah this has got to be right okay let's see and check it out yes and that's it so these are the only two ones that are indeed equal all right that is it for the weekly live stream covering sat problems straight from khan academy once again if you like this and you found it helpful please click that like button if you have additional questions make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below and last but not least if you want to see more of these or more of our other content related to math especially the math music videos make sure to click that subscribe button thank you guys so much and have an awesome rest of your day take it easy